So in this lecture, I'm still uh, sort of wrapping up th some things from the previous lecture that we didn't get to. So the first one is I want to show you how we can turn uh, one of these second order linear constant coefficients differential equations into one of these, uh, the, t the type of thing that we uh, mentioned at the end of the previous lecture. So here the unknown function is just one function, uh, x of t. Here there are sort of two unknown functions, x of t and y of t, and then I'm going to use the vector x symbol to package them together like this. Um, and here a is going to be some 2 by 2 matrix. So what I'm going to show is that you can turn one of these into one of these, um, and you can actually go the other way, turn one of these into one of these. So this kind of thing that we're studying is actually not so new of a thing. It's just that when we look at it this way, uh, some linear algebra uh, approaches uh, and perspectives will become available that were not available when we were looking at it this way. So notice what's happening when we go back and forth between these two. Uh, here we have second order, one unknown function. Here we have first order, but two unknown functions. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, from here to here, we're decreasing the order, but we're increasing what you might call the dimension of the system. This one was a one-dimensional system. This is like a two-dimensional system. Um, and what's better? Uh, I think in most cases, you, you actually prefer to have a higher dimensional system, but, but first order, order, that would actually be better. You can do more with this just because the, um, you know, linear algebra is so well understood, uh, assuming it becomes well understood for you also, this becomes uh, a much better way of doing things. I mean, it just looks less complicated also, right? Right? Like, look at all the stuff I have to write here, and look at this, it's so compact. I've just got this uh, matrix of coefficients. Okay, so let's see how we can turn these, turn one into to another. So let's start with one of these. So you've got this one unknown function, x of t. Then here's the key for turning this into uh, a first order system of differential equations. Introduce a new unknown function, y of t. And here's how I'm going to define y of t. It'll be x prime of t. So our new unknown function y of t will be the derivative of x of t. And here is actually one of the differential equations in our system. Uh, this is telling us x prime in terms of x, y, and t, right? As long as x prime is, is y. So uh, this def both defines y and provides one of the differential equations that will end up being in our system. Now for the other differential equation, it's going to be this, except now it can be written as a first order differential equation. So if y is x prime, then y prime is x prime prime, right? So what does this look like? It looks like a x prime prime, which is y prime, plus b x prime, which is y, plus c x, which is just x. And so I can solve this for y prime, and I get y prime is, let's see, negative b over a minus c over uh, times y. Okay, let me do this in multiple steps. Okay, uh, a y prime is negative b y minus c x. So y prime is, and then I want to write the x one first. You'll see why, because I want to write things in matrix form. So minus c over a x plus negative b over a y. Okay, now put that together with what we had up here. x is just 0x plus 1y. x prime is 0x plus 1y. So there's our uh, linear homogeneous uh, system of differential equations with constant coefficients. Here's another way of writing it. We could write it as xy, of course these are functions of t, I'm, I just usually don't write that, prime equals, and then this matrix, 0, 1, negative c over a, uh, negative b over a, applied to xy. Or if I allow myself to um, use x with a vector symbol to stand for x of t, y of t packaged together like this, 
then a short way of writing this is x with a vector symbol prime equals this matrix times x. So you see we have converted one of these into one of these. Um, and you can go the other way too. Uh, so this is this is the useful way, I would say, because uh, these are better. Maybe that's personal opinion. I think these are better uh, to work with in the end than these. Uh, so the conversion this way that I just showed is probably what's actually more convenient. But what shows up on your homework is the other way around. Um, and the reason for that is that right now, for you, actually, these are the ones that you know how to do. Right? So that's what we studied in chapter 2. And these are the new thing. So if you can convert these to these, then that gives you a way of doing these. It's not a very good way, but it's a way that is available immediately. So we might as well try it and see what happens. So let's say we start with uh, one of these and then try to convert the other way. Okay, so when I say this, this is a compact way of writing this. Okay, and I'm using A, B, C, D for the entries here, but note that this has nothing to do with the A, B, C here. The coefficients in front are going to be different, so not related. Um, the goal is to, in the end, have one differential equation with one unknown function, x, that goes constant x prime prime plus constant x prime plus constant x equals zero. The constants are not going to end up being a, b, c, since those are the names I'm using for the matrix entries. So this is really two differential equations sitting in a system, coupled system, right? So x prime involves y like this, and y prime involves x. Now, if I want to end up with something uh, like over here with an x prime prime in it, then what I can do is take this one and take a derivative. So taking a derivative with respect to t on both sides here, so applying ddt, ddt, I get x prime prime on the left side, and on the right side I get ax prime plus by prime. All right, uh, so that's getting somewhere. Uh, I have something involving x prime prime and x prime, but unfortunately it involves y prime. I'd like to eliminate all traces of y from here and just end up with something purely involving x. Uh, so you see the, the trade-off that I'm going for? I've increased the order, it's now second order rather than first order, but my hope is that uh, after doing this I can lower the dimension. So just end up with something involving x alone, eliminating y from the picture. Um, okay, well I could put in so y prime can, I can be gotten rid of in favor of this, right? But the problem is when I introduce this, I'm going to introduce a y. So there's still y stuff in there. But then I can get rid of the y using this again. So watch how this goes. So x prime prime is ax prime plus by prime, right? But then y prime is cx plus dy. Okay, but now y, so let's go to this. Let me just use a different color to show you a different track of reasoning. From this, this time not applying ddt, but, but just solving for y, uh, I get, sorry, uh, let me write it in this order. by is x prime minus ax, right? And then y is then 1 over b x prime minus a over b x. Actually, I'm seeing that uh, I can solve for by, and by is showing up here. So how about I forget about solving for y, solve for by. That way I don't have to say anything about whether b is 0 or not, right? Uh, if b is 0, then I'd be dividing by 0, but, but what I'm doing now works whether b is 0 or, no, or not. Okay, so let me distribute this plus d and then by. So this by I'm going to replace by x prime minus ax.
great. And now let's write this in kind of a more standard looking form. So let me start by combining terms. So I see a plus d being multiplied by x prime. And then I've got um, bc times x and then negative ad. All right, so x prime prime equals negative, or how about I add that to the other side, minus a plus d x prime um, plus, let me just flip around that subtraction, a d minus b c x equals zero. There we go. Constant times x prime prime plus constant times x prime plus constant times x equals zero. So we've converted what we started with here, first order but two equations, to second order but one equation, one unknown function. So only only x's show up here. Um, and if you've heard of, well, sh surely you've heard of determinant of a matrix. It's interesting that the determinant shows up here. That was the determinant of the original matrix, right? And you may or may not have heard of what this is. Uh, we'll probably discuss this later. But this is called the trace of the matrix. The trace of the matrix is the sum of the entries on the diagonal. So this is also a, a sort of relevant thing having to do with the matrix. So this is the method that I'm going to suggest that you use when doing uh, problem three on your homework. Um, so you might have this with some different num numbers, I don't know. But basically, just write this as, uh, well, you don't need to write it in matrix form. Uh, actually, what you're going to do basically is take a derivative here, get x prime prime equals x prime minus 7 y prime, then use this to eliminate y prime, then go back and use the first one to eliminate y, basically doing the same stuff I did here, except you have specific numbers rather than a, b, c, d. Um, then you'll end up with something like this, which you can use the methods you learned about in chapter 2 to handle that. So the point of this basically is just to show you that you have a way of dealing with these kinds of systems but this is not a very good way. So this is actually not so important. Um, and yeah, what's more important is the linear algebra techniques that we're gonna learn about for dealing with these to begin with. And those techniques will be so powerful that actually probably what you'll do from now on is if you have this, you'll probably convert it to this instead.